to welcome you to BeMoreNews.com, the news before the news, where we uncover the truth. Charles Robinson, the one and only. What's happening with this election? Is it 50-50? Does Governor O'Malley have the advantage? Is uh, former Governor Ehrlich uh, coming in, you know, catching up with him? What's the word from your realm? Well, first and foremost, uh, always thank you, Donnie, for allowing me to at least pontificate on your site as well as uh, come on your site to talk about politics. First and foremost, you know, the polls are saying uh, a couple of different things, I think. Uh, the Washington Post poll, uh, the uh, poll from the more, most current polls, has the current governor up by about 11 points. I believe it's a little bit more closer than that. Uh, in addition to that, I think that uh, we're into what is called the round of debates. We're going to have about five of them. Um, I think what these debates do, they reinforce what people already think about the candidates. So we're talking about a small sliver of people that you have to convince. It's the undecided, it's the independents. Uh, one of the things that I always take a look at is where are the battlegrounds. I will uh, suggest to you that for both candidates, Baltimore County is the major battleground. Okay, and, and specifically the east side, which is heavily uh, it's dominated a, by, by white Americans. It's by whites, and, and it's an interesting, eclectic group. It has a lot of Democrats who are conservative Democrats that have often crossed party lines to vote for Republicans. So does uh, is my theory correct that Joe Bartenfelder, the councilman who ran for county exec in Baltimore County, that those people that he influenced uh, during the primary, they will move over to Ehrlich versus O'Malley? They were already, I think they were already in Ehrlich's corner. And one of the things that, and, and one of the reasons why I think Barton felt a law, loss is the problem that everybody who looks at Baltimore County has, and that is they believe there are more people on the east side of Baltimore than on the west side of so Baltimore. So it was a failure to understand uh, that there are more people on the west side of Baltimore and there are fewer on the east side. And a failure to campaign the Liberty Road Corridor. Pretty much. That's always a, a, a key a key constituency. The Lockhearn area, the Woodlawn area. Those were your concentrations of people. And the new concentration is in Newtown and Owens Mills. Mm -hmm. I gotta give, we have to give State Senator Dolores Kelly for being the visionary out there because she put her influence behind Kevin Kamenetz and he won. Well, you know, um, Kevin, Kevin was shrewd. Kevin understood he needed <laughs> black votes. I mean, it, don't get me wrong, you know, there is a sizable Jewish population that extends from Pikesville going out to Owens. But Mills. I understand that not all of the Jewish community was behind Kevin Kamenetz. Is that correct? That's correct. And, and but part of the part of the deal is is you got to have a cogent message. And I thought Kevin's message was very cogent in the sense that it was succinct and you knew where he stood as far as going to be the next county executive of the county of Baltimore. Howard County is also a battleground for especially in the gubernatorial race. The western portion of, of Howard County is very rural and it is very much Republican territory. The, uh, the cities such as Ellicott City, Columbia proper, Laurel, and, and those areas are where the population centers are. But that, that group is being split now. You know, it was a bastion of liberalism, but now it's gotten a lot more outside people who brought to the state whatever background they have from other areas. Brilliant move to bring President Obama to the rally at Bowie State University, a historically black college, or actually a historic black university. A brilliant move by the current governor, Martin O'Malley. Yeah, it fires up the troops. So let me tell you that there are, I mean, as you know, the president's poll numbers are down across the country. This is a friendly confine. Uh, he has always known that. Uh, I went when he was running for office to uh, University of Maryland where he had a large rally, he had 18,000 people there. And one of the things that the president does when he does, he connects well. I know you had an opportunity to talk to him, and I, you probably said, this is a lot different than what he is. Well, on President college. Obama? Yeah. I, I didn't have the opportunity to talk to him yet. However, I will tell you that while Martin o or Governor O'Malley is a charmer, is very media savvy, dude, President Obama, smooth. Uh, one, of, one of the greatest speakers since Cicero. <laughs> well, you know, uh, uh, he has an eloquence that I think connects well with large audiences. Uh, Black, white, young, old, green, blue, right, <laughs> well, left. And, and, and I think one of the challenges the president has is he's had a stacked house against him. 
Tell me about this. Now, is it fair? I mean, this man came into a burning house. The whole house was on fire. Uh-huh. And in two years, these Tea Party people, and we're pushing half and halves on BeMoreNews.com. <laughs> for, for people who don't know what half and halves are, it's half iced tea and half lemonade. So let's get rid of the tea parties and go half and halves. <laughs> but, but nonetheless, this man went into a burning house. The house was on fire. And two years later, I mean, it was on fire for eight years, uh, from Iraq to Hurricane Katrina to uh, all kinds of fumbling of public education debacle, no child left behind or all children left behind. Help me out. Why are people heavily critical on my president, our president, Barack Obama? Well, you know, Donnie, if people had read my blog, Charles Black Politics blog, which is an insider's view of black politics in America, you would have heard that right after he gave his inaugural address. Heard what? Um, and part of what I think the president has had, all the problems that he's had, I hate to tell you, he's, he's actually had more legislative victories than most presidents have had in their first Including term. Including health care. Right. And, uh, Reform. And, uh, right. But I think the boogeyman in the room is unemployment. We all know people who are out of work. Tom Moore said to me out at WCBM on Saturday night that the president has failed to create enough jobs in the two years that he's been in, in there after eight years of a burning house. The house was on fire. And part of, I think, is this, is this mounted campaign. And you and I had a conversation on the phone earlier today when we talked about the new Supreme Court ruling that has allowed corporations to fund campaigns and not allow the names of the donors to be asked. Uh, what does this allow? This foreign, allows, foreign money? The president has suggested it allows foreign corporations to try and influence politics, which is illegal in the United States. I think the other problem is, is, is that what you have is very wealthy people who are driving this need to, if you will, I hate to say it, go backwards. In other words, we don't want taxes on millionaires. I'm going like, and what's wrong with that? And I can't get an answer to that. The other problem is the, um, the, the largeness of the, um, the organization. It's called the Chamber of Commerce. They have thrown so much money. They basically said, we're going to get you. And they have basically cornered every major business and small business into this corner. You got to be with us and not be with the president. And, and, and that's a shame. Because I, I, I had a conversation with a guy recently, and I asked him, did you make money in, in the last year? He said, yes. I said, so you're a capitalist? He said, yes, but you're a socialist. I said, how am I a socialist? He said, because you like Obama. I was like, no, I don't like the president as much as I'm a, I'm a reporter. All I got to do is I got to ask you, did you make money? Because if you made money, tell me why the president's bad for you. And he didn't have an answer. You know, I, I really get lost in the labels from Tea Party to right wing to left wing. How about common sense, the party of common sense? Whatever party that is, whoever's making common sense decisions, as you said, this is about meat and potato issues. People have to put food on the tables. Uh, the holidays are coming up. People are stressed out of their minds. Uh, people are hiring uh, people to kill their spouses. As I mean, Bal you talk about Baltimore City, Baltimore County, y'all got some crime out here. Right. And, I, and I think that, you know, we can all point to the economy. But, Donnie, as you know, I've always been an optimist. This, this country has survived not because of fear. Mm -hmm. It has survived because of great entrepreneurs like yourself and others who said, who said they don't look at the glass as half empty. They mm -hmm. always look at the glass as half full. Okay, fresh back from uh, Toronto, Canada? Yes, uh, went there for the National Association of Black Journalists, and uh, we had a board meeting there. We met our counterparts, the Canadian Association of Black Journalists. Let me just tell you, it is the most ethnically diverse city on the planet, and if you haven't been, let me suggest you go. And they got a black prime minister there, black lady. Black lady who's the prime minister there, uh, and they are doing some amazing things. Good deal. We love and respect you. You're on love Maryland you Public Television and Regional Director, and you're, you're going right. for president? I, I, I can't say that. Okay. I'm well, not, I heard I'm you're not, going for president no, of NABJ, I and not, uh, I got to make sure I'm just, I'm just happy to okay. be the Regional Director. Keep Thank watching, you very much. Keep watching BeMoreNews.com, the news before the news where we uncover the truth. We thank you uh, for all of your support over the years. Thank you. Good deal.